Hey guys, it's a friction here. Tiger Tank One Two. Having called me, I don't really care. Welcome back to World of Tanks, where we today are going to be reviewing the Bat Chatillon Bourrasque, which is a French Tier Eight Premium Medium Tank. Um, it has all of the characteristics: a really interesting gun, very good mobility, extremely good spotting, and very good concealment, but no armor. So. The Burrasque, before we go into the characteristics, let's talk about the elephant in the room with this thing. This is not a well-balanced tank. Uh, it never has been, and it probably never will be. This tank, I'm not entirely sure when exactly it was released, but it was just a couple of years ago, maybe two or three. This tank certainly had quite an impact on Tier 8, uh, on Tier 8 experience, because it's just such a brutal vehicle that um, has a lot of good qualities if you know how to use it. Now, the thing is, I'm not a big fan of premium tanks that are super powerful um, because people can just buy them, they don't have to grind them. So it kind of means that anyone can get their hands on them and sometimes players that maybe should not get their hands on them. Maybe players that need to have a little bit of time before they get to tier eight. But still, it's in there, people will want to buy it. I bought it myself way, way back ago when I first um, had the opportunity to buy it. And I, I think it's not that we should blame the players for buying it, we should probably blame the Wargaming because Wargaming should also look into balancing when they release premium vehicles. And they just did not really do that. And they continue to do that unfortunately <laughs> right now and we have extremely unbalanced premium tanks still in the game but the Burask is still a very good tank and in today's video i want to talk about what makes it such a good vehicle so let's first go into the firepower tab because this is where the fun begins as uh, i'm not even sure who said that someone said that it's it's from star wars i think Either way, um, it has a 105mm gun, let me just uh, show you guys the characteristics real fast. It's a tier 9 gun, um, it is called the MLE-57D-1504, which um, is a gun that you might be familiar with, at least with the, stick, uh, with the characteristics, there's some of them, uh, because this gun is very similar to the EBR-105's gun, and we all know that the EBR-105 is the most balanced tank in the game. And um, this does also mean that the Burrasque is very balanced. The, the real, the reality unfortunately is that uh, it's not very balanced. So you get a gun with two shots in a magazine. So it's an auto-loading tank because it's a French vehicle. And um, it takes you 21 seconds to reload. That's with the crew and with the consumables I'm using and the equipment. Um, the rate of fire is not very high, 5.2 rounds per minute. The average damage, on the other hand, for a medium tank, is extremely high with 360 damage per shot on average. And you can roll up to 450 damage or 270 if you get really unlucky with the RNG. Now the thing is, you have two of them and the reload between the shots is only two seconds. So basically, in about two seconds, you can do 720 damage or even more. Now, remember you're playing against tier 6 tanks sometimes, and tier 6 vehicles maybe only have 700 HP, 680 or something like that. That is basically a two-shot kill immediately. This is how the Burask has been able to really defend itself, because that burst potential in that burst damage is really, really nasty if you go up against it. How did Wargaming think that they can balance it out? How can they actually look into it and balance the vehicle so that it is adequate and it doesn't um, do things that are completely over the top? So they actually didn't give it any kind of premium. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, that would have been great. But they didn't really give it a lot of pen, 190 millimeters. With 105 millimeter gun, there's not a lot, but at the same time, against not very well armored targets 190 is going to be more than enough and the burrasque since it's so mobile it will go up against vehicles that most of the time are also mobile and also don't have any armor so 190 um, millimeters of penetration will be mostly enough then 
What did they do? They also only have six degrees of gun depression on this vehicle, 13 degrees of gun elevation. This is a, um, uh, this is a French problem with the gun elevation. Um, they can't raise the gun up, um, but they usually have better gun depression than six degrees. But six degrees is really laughable. Also, the aim time, 2.98 seconds for a fully aimed in reticle. That even with equipment and with crew, uh, with crew training, with brothers in arms and everything. So this is even worse. It is basically three seconds, above three seconds, 3.2 seconds or 3.3 seconds to get this gun fully aimed in. The dispersion is also terrible, 0 0.39 at 100 meters. So basically they said they would make all the gun characteristics horrible in turn for allowing us a burst potential of 720. So I'd say this is all fair and well, but in reality, you will see that some of these things do maybe not hinder the vehicle as much as they maybe should. Uh, especially if you go into the field modifications, I think there are ways to make this tank a bit better and to get just a bit more out of it. And depending on your playstyle, you're going to be able to make things work even with these characteristics that are holding you back. That's very interesting because it does show the quality of the vehicle and why so many people like it. Moving on to survivability, this tank. Uh, oh, one more thing. Um, with the firepower, your uh, premium shells are also um, APCR shells, as you can see down in the middle, um, since your standard shells are also APCR shells. And they have 240 millimeters of pen. Now, the thing is, a lot of people usually just run this vehicle with premium ammo because the 190 doesn't work for them. So they go to the 240 because you will be facing tier 10 tanks. And basically, um, it is a gold slingshot fiesta where a lot of players will be losing a lot of credits because they spend a lot of gold or credits on those gold shells. Moving on to survivability, this tab we can basically ignore. Um, this tank has 1,250 HP for a medium tank. Remember, this is a medium tank. That is basically uh, the lowest of the low. That's basically tier 8 light tank um, levels. Hull armor is non-existent. Turret armor is non-existent. This tank can get squashed by anything. Artillery really likes to shoot you. Keep that in mind when you're playing the Burrasque. Mobility-wise, this tank is on another planet. Um, it has 60... Two kilometers per hour top speed, if I recall correctly, uh, and the specific power to weight is 28.7. So this thing is extremely fast. This is on par with light tanks because it weighs nothing. This tank weighs 15 tons max, and it only has 351 horsepower or even less because I have a turbo on it. And you can actually get that 351 with the right equipment and field modifications. But it's pretty mad if you think about it. Um, the horsepower, that's not a lot, but the tank is very light, so you don't really need a very buff engine in there, which weighs more, because you already have almost 30 power to weight, or 30 um, horsepower per ton, which is mad. Um, you, your top speed, on the other hand, with 67 uh, kilometers per hour with the, um, with the turbocharger is not the craziest, but still... If you're constantly driving around with 67 because of that incredible acceleration, you don't really have to worry about anything. You will get from point A to B probably the fastest with other light tanks because your power to weight ratio is so good. A little hill is not going to be a challenge for you. There are no challenges in terms of um, places to be uh, when you play this vehicle because this tank is so ridiculously fast. It does have a problem though, and that is um, the traver uh, the reverse speed is only 24 kilometers per hour, and the traverse speed of the tracks is 45.52 degrees per second. That is on par with very, very bad medium tanks. Now the thing is, the problem, um, they don't have the, um, they don't, this tank is one of the, the vehicles that it doesn't have the ability to turn on the spot with, um, with tracks going into a different direction. Usually, uh, I'm not really sure what it's called. It has a name. Is it neutral? Is it neutral? No, 
it's not neutral. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Either way, usually when you turn on the spot, um, your track on the right, if you want to turn, like, on your, on your left, sorry, this is the left, this is the left of the vehicle. If you want to turn to the left, this track is going to turn forwards and this track is going to go backwards. So they are going to be um, in the different um, direction, going into the different direction, which allows you to turn faster. The problem here is they don't have that ability on this vehicle. So this is one of the other nerfs they had to nerf the mobility of the tank. They basically lock up one of the tracks and you only move in the direction you want to move. And that is with the track that is going into that direction. So they lock the right track and they only move the left track forward. So you have to stay in position. This makes it really, really uncomfortable to play and it makes it really, really weird. Uh, it's something that you have to get used to. So what you end up doing is you do have um, the clutch brake with space. And if you have a bit of mobility and you use the clutch, you learn to become an incredible drifter where you drift into every kind of direction because you have to use the clutch. Uh, that's how you can turn your tank the fastest and get away very quickly. That's something you have to learn. So there's a bit of a learning curve with this tank. And um, I think that is one of the reasons why it's so popular because it's not just straightforward. It does have a couple of things that are not very user-friendly, such as the pen and such as the mobility. So they did nerf the mobility, at least they, they did give it a little bit of a uh, hindrance, but still it's not going to keep you away from getting really good games if you know what you're doing. Moving on to the concealment tab, this tank is on par with light tanks. It's small, it is really well concealed. Um, yeah, look at that, look at that, look at those numbers, 719 points. Uh, this tank is incredibly good at concealed, uh, at being concealed. Spotting wise, this tank is also really good if you use the right equipment. I have coded optics class one because I play this as a very aggressive kind of scout. And then with the field modification, I get an additional bonus on the spotting tab right there with the equipment. I have the right kind of crew for it. And down you have 390 um, view range, which isn't that amazing for tier eight medium tanks, which is the norm, I'd say, but you can make it really, really work for yourself. So, this has been a really long introduction, I guess. How does this turn into gameplay? How good does this tank do when it is on a roll? I'd say we jump into a gameplay, see what this tank is all about, and I can give you guys a picture or paint you guys a picture of what the Burrask is all about in the game and how you can effectively play it and how you can effectively maybe counter it and what you can do against the Burrask. It's basically just HE, just fire HE. That's all you need to do against the Burrask, fire HE. This thing has no armor, you know? Do whatever you wanna do with HE. This thing is going to be punished very, very quickly. So let's jump over to the gameplay. Okay guys, we have to do these things a bit differently now. Unfortunately for me, because of the new update, the older replays cannot be used. I cannot make them work. I need to download the old version of World of Tanks, but then I also need to run it and it doesn't work. I don't have the time for it, so unfortunately we're going to have to try to do this live commentary, live gameplay, and I have to show you what this tank is capable of. This is going to make it a lot more difficult to do, um, and it's going to be very based, very much based on the matchmaking. Because how you play this tank is very dependent on what kind of tier you're facing. You can go up against tier 6 tanks, you can go up against tier 10 tanks. This time around we're in a tier 10 match. I don't want to make the video too long, but I'm going to show you guys how I play this vehicle in a tier 10 setup. Um, because still, you only have a very limited amount of armor, which is the case for uh, tier tier 10, tier 6, tier 7, and tier 8, um, the amount of armor that you have on your vehicle is not going to suffice to allow you to actually engage or fight against anyone um, at tier, yeah, tier 8 and tier 6 and tier 5. Doesn't matter what kind of tier you go, these vehicles all have enough pen to deal with you. But what we have 
here is a situation where at tier 6 I could play this vehicle a bit more aggressively because of basically not having to care about the pen too much and the problem now is or the difference here is definitely that I do not have that luxury anymore at tier 8 and tier 9 and 10 I have to be very very selective with my shots I need to be really careful what I shoot at um, why I shoot it, where I shoot it, and with the accuracy that we have with this t uh, this tank, it's quite difficult. I'm quite impressed that I'm not getting spotted by the Emil 2. I am spotting the Jagdpanzer and the Emil 2 right now with someone else or with um, these heavies over there. Um, now the thing is, this tank has great camo values and its base view range of 390 meters is not as good as tier 8 light tanks, but it does work if you are using some equipment to boost it as well this tank can be a really good ta uh, light tank it can be a very good hybrid a light tank that does have like really um, an effective armament if you use the right ammunition type and in the right situation you can really make this tank shine very very nicely but as i mentioned prior before we uh, jumped into the game it's very difficult to get the handle of this vehicle because there are some things that are a bit awkward now i can just show you guys real fast how long it takes to turn your vehicle once completely do you see how the the, the track locks up and you basically utilize the other track to give you the friction to turn around so that's something that is quite annoying you do not have that neutral um steering or i'm not entirely sure what it's called Either way, we're trying to put some pressure on this Emil 1, uh, Emil 2. He is in a hull down position right there, and we only have about 6 degrees of gun depression, so that's something you have to keep in mind. What we can do over here, though, is we can take out this uh, Progetto 46, which probably is also our best bet of doing some damage. Now, I want to keep the pressure on this Emil 2, and what you can see right here is this beauty of the alpha damage with this vehicle, this tank has really crazy damage for a, a medium tank um, I think the base damage is 390 no 360 excuse me but we rolled very nicely there with 431 and that really does hurt when someone hits you for that amount of um, damage now obviously we haven't really been very active now so far um, we have a KPZ 50 T over there we have a T1 T 103 in the bushes to our right with a Lorraine 40 T what I could be trying right here is a very ballsy move and go into these bushes here because we kind of have lost the side there. We have lost the hill over here and we do not have access. Well, we do have a bit of access over to the other side. But what I want to do is I want to give my team the best vision possible to take on these guys. And what is right here is a very nice chance for us to take out this ISU-152. But unfortunately, we only hit the tracks, but the second shot does damage. That's something you have to keep in mind. This vehicle, its accuracy is horrendous. Its aim time is terrible as well. Um, but you can make it work if you play as a flanking medium tank. As a flanking light tank or medium tank, you can be very effective. And if you have a bit of expertise in scouting, you can do this. You can take on these vehicles, give your team a bit of vision. And um, if you have a bit of map knowledge as well, you can get these guys to sweat on top of that ridge line. That's where probably a lot of your damage will be coming from. It's going to be assistance damage probably, um, because if you utilize this vehicle in the correct way, you don't even have to be firing all the time. That makes it a lot more flexible in my opinion. It gives it more flexibility and that's really really cool we're kind of pushing up right now we have the advantage in tanks they only have six no what what is it they only have five more vehicles i i looked at the, the wrong side there they only have five more vehicles running around and most of these tanks probably are all low hp so let's see if we can take on this uh isu 152 i just wanted to knock him out and now you can really see how careful you have to be with this tank because you lose HP so quickly. Um, if there are two vehicles shooting you, well, you're gonna have a bit of a problem, especially with all the autoloaders in the game nowadays. Um, 
that makes it quite difficult. Now this tank does accelerate quickly. This tank has a top speed of um, what was it? Top speed of 62 kilometers. If you use the right equipment, you can get it all the way up to 67, which I'm using right now. I'm using the turbocharger, and I would highly advise you to utilize that one as well. We have a KPZ 50T that is running away from us. Please don't have RNG. Well, he didn't get us there, but we didn't hit him as well. That's just something you have to get used to when you're playing this vehicle that you have some really wonky um, aim time and you have a really wonky um, shot sometimes. But are we going to be able to put one into the Lorraine 40T? Yeah, we're able to do that. So in the end, still a pretty good game. Um, damage wise, we didn't do the most damage. We did maybe 1,700. We didn't connect most of our hits, but at the same time, we spotted about 2,000 um, 2, damage very quickly. And it's not like it was a masterclass or anything. We just utilized, or we just um, took care of, basically, um, you know, the, the important parts, which is you need to have a bit of map awareness. You need to know the strengths and uh, weaknesses of your vehicle. And you need to know where the enemies are and if you know all of these characteristics or all of the factors and you know where the enemies are coming from well and what kind of tanks you're going up against i think you can play this tank very very well and you don't even have to dip too much into the premium shells now the premium shells we haven't really talked about them in that game because i didn't use any um, i do have 12 of them loaded in that's quite a few you do have 240 millimeters of penetration with the premium shells and that premium shell penetration is definitely quite a nice bonus to have so what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to jump into another match this is but this is going to be the final match we're going to record it real fast i'm going to give you the verdict uh, hopefully it's a tier 6 match um or something in the tier 8 range and you'll see what this tank is capable of against equal tier opponents and maybe some lower tier opponents as well but yeah i'm not i'm not sure if it's going to be a match like that because we'll have to see either way we're going to jump over i'm going to cut it real fast and then we're going to open these three boxes that i have which are the free ones and um, we're going to finish this video okay perfect this is the first and only match that I've managed to get into where we're going up against opposition of the lower tier now this does present us with a all with complete new challenge for this vehicle because there are now tanks in the game that have a high rate of fire but maybe not have the the, the amount of pen that they would be effective against other tier eight or seven uh, tier eight or nine opponents. But these vehicles do have the ability to be quite a pain in the ass for us because we don't have any armor and. Um, that is going to be a very, very important thing when you are playing against lower tier opponents. Because the advantages that you have in mobility and with the gun and with the spotting, well, that kind of goes out of the window when you're going up against vehicles that have a better rate of fire and maybe even better armor than you. Most of the time, probably better armor as well. So, going up against these opponents makes it a bit difficult um it makes it makes it difficult in the one sense that you have to be on your toes because as soon as you get spotted when these tanks start hitting you they'll do a lot of damage because they will not be bouncing but on the other hand if you manage to catch these guys off guard you can do massive amounts of damage because you don't have to pay attention to where you shoot and that's something you cannot do when you're playing against tier 8 opponents and um, low, uh, higher tier vehicles. Right there, the very first time I uh, faced this, um, the new Yo tanks, the premium one. And I mean, you can see already, this game has a complete different kind of feeling to it. Because it's already a very damage based game. We don't go as much for spotting as we go for the, the damage dealing aspect. And that's what you can see against tier 7 opponents, lower tier opponents. You can be a total piece of shit. Um, because these tanks 
they cannot survive these rounds coming in from you. When they hit you, once, when you hit them once or twice, you take away more than half of their HP. We took away half of the HP of the Leo, we took away, uh, I think, half of the HP on the Amex M4 um, 45, and that's just something that you cannot do with any other premium medium tank um, with that kind of burst potential with uh, like two shells and that makes this tank such a powerful vessel a powerful vehicle uh, where you can really <laughs> use that to your advantage uh, I think our Carnarvon was just hit for 900 with a high explosive shell from that Caliban uh, I haven't checked out the Caliban but I've heard things about that vehicle I've heard that it's completely ridiculous um, in terms of uh, gameplay uh, it has high explosive shells and it has um, premium AP shells and that the high explosive shells have pen of up to uh, 100 and um, what was it 190 damage something along those lines so yeah we got very lucky right there because we do get spotted by uh, I think the comet, which is it's quite interesting because uh, I have very very good camera rating on this vehicle, um, and we didn't fire, and we got punished for it twice by E25. Now, an E25 has a very high rate of fire, and that's one of the worst tanks to be sitting out in front of if you're playing this vehicle, because that's exactly what I mean when I when I say these high rate of fire tier sevens that. Um, can just go through anything that doesn't have armor that's exactly what the e25 can do it could have been uh, yeah um if i w w if i don't have the mobility which i thankfully have in this vehicle he would have probably dealt quite a bit of damage to me so right now i think the south is very heavily fortified the north the town is going to have a bit of a problem because there's a torn wagon and i've heard that that thing is extremely powerful in a hold down position um, and I I do have the mobility, so yeah, I try I tried a, a pop shot at the E25. I'm going to try to assist these guys up north because I know that there's an AT7 and there's an EBR Hotchkiss over there, and uh, because we have our forces all over the place at the moment. Now against a Tornwagen like that vehicle over there, this tank, especially when the Tornwagen is in a position like that. You, you really cannot do a lot with this vehicle. Um, but I don't think anyone can do a lot against the Tornwagen in a hold down position. And if you don't have artillery and artillery doesn't have ability to, to shoot at them, uh, you're going to have a bit of a problem right there. Speaking about problems, uh, we have uh, a Rheinmetall Borsig. Oh boy, look at that horrible shot that I just dunked. Horrible shot that I just wasted to nowhere I want to hit that E25 we hit him we do quite a bit of damage but that uh, EBR Hotchkiss is still alive over here and I hope our chariot here moves away because uh, he doesn't really have any protection there the EBR Hotchkiss has moved himself into a very awkward position and I think I will be able to punish him right now we take him out of the game I reload again uh, it's a bit awkward sometimes when you're reloading with this tank because you only have two rounds when you fire once you have to think about should you fire again or should you reload to have the full burst potential that's something you have to get used to you have to learn when to fire when to not fire but I think it was very important that we moved our way up here so that we could assist these guys because they really need some help we have a Scorpion G who is quite far at the front he's very aggressive um, in his playstyle the Tornwagen has moved up right there um, that is going to be a very difficult opponent to take care of. We put one into his side because he overextended himself. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be a, a bit more difficult now. I think I'm also going to switch to premium APCR because we're going up against a Tornwagen. And I don't think I can be very effective with APCR that is non-premium uh, with 190 millimeters of pen. Uh, because of the high mobility and because of our um, very, very good 
um, camel raiding, yeah, exactly, I, I got the word, we were able to remain undetected by that Tornbug. And what I want to do right now is... Oh, I did not expect that uh, Skoda T26 to be spotted. Um, what I need to do right now is I need to defend the base. So I'm going to move into the, bush the bushes over here. There's a King Tiger in the um, in the basin over there. And now we have to use the double bush technique to take care of anything that might come our way. And this is where you really benefit um, from the camo rating and the, the decent view range that you have in this vehicle. Uh, because what you can do right now is you can just spot these guys, hopefully get some uh, support from the back, reload, and because of the burst potential, take out one, another one, get two kills, and now only have one vehicle remaining. Um, unfortunately, our chariot here did get spotted right over there. And now we have a King Tiger, we have a Tornwagen, and we are only three vehicles against uh, a bunch of um, Tier 8s and some other vehicles. Now, as I mentioned... Oh, I have a bit of a problem. I think the Caliban just spotted me because there is no one else here. So I think, yeah, that's that's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, the Caliban spotted me. Um, he sees me. He aims in because the Caliban has a horrible um, aim time, I think. I've, I've heard something along the lines of 3.5 seconds or something like that. So it takes forever. I can see the shell traveling because I think it's 500 meters per second uh, for the shell to reach the destination. And uh, unfortunately, in the end, we get annihilated over here and um, we lose the match. But I still think it showed you how strong this tank can be if played correctly. And if you take into consideration that you do not have HP, um, you don't have armor. Your armor is basically reliant on your um, hit points because your hit points guarantee that you live and 1250 we were only hit like three times once by the caliban which did 900 damage basically <laughs> and two times by the e25 and we were basically dead so yeah um you can see that 3833 damage only 560 damage spotted right there because we have played the vehicle in a different configuration we played it differently we wanted to be the one the ones doing damage now the thing is that means that you also can have several um, equipment slots you can choose how you want to play it but because you cannot choose if you play against tier 6 tanks or against tier 8 tanks or 9 tanks well you don't really know which equipment is right for you so you have to figure out what you want to use when you're playing the burrask um, you can set up the burrask as a fast flanking aggressive um, damage dealing medium tank so you could reassign this as well to somehow to survivability which would allow you probably to get more hp which i would highly advise against and then you can see over here if you want to get more like better aim time or um a better dispersion and all these kind of things so yeah in the end i think the burrask is an extremely extremely good tank in the hands of a capable player in the hands of a player that is new to the game that just doesn't have or who doesn't has uh, like the player who does not have the experience in world tanks at tier 8 and with tanks such as this one where you have a hybrid between a light tank and a medium they will probably struggle quite a bit uh, against tier 6 tanks you'll be feeling like the king of the world because you can do all the damage that you want to do with this gun even though that all of the characteristics, the aim time, the dispersion are all pretty bad. If you get used to the way that this gun, how this gun works, you'll be able to make this thing work at tier 6 and tier 7. But against tier 8 tanks, you have to choose a different approach. Either you dip into the premium ammunition with 240 millimeters of pen, which is not a guaranteed pen still at tier 8, um, or 
you start playing a passive role. You go a bit more into the direction of a scout. That's the beauty of this tank. You have both kind of gameplay styles. Either you want to play a French light tank or you want to play a French medium tank. A French light tank with a very good gun. Uh, well, very, very high damage dealing gun. Or a medium tank with a high damage dealing gun, but very bad gun characteristics, but with very good mobility of a light tank and the spotting distance um, of a light tank if you use the right equipment. So I'd say this is a really cool tank, but before you get into it, you probably need to have a bit of experience playing light tanks or medium tanks, because this is where you can really grow with the Burask. Uh, you need to read the map, you need to read the enemies, you need to read the, your, uh, your team. There's a lot of analysis that you have to do when you're playing the Burask, because if you do not look, if you do not have the intel, you're going to die with this tank very, very quickly because people will just destroy you any second you drive out in the open because your tank has no armor. And I think that is my verdict. A very cool tank, but you need to get to know this vehicle. You need to learn it. You need to learn how to play the Burask. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's such a well-liked vehicle, because right there, dealing more than 3,000 damage, you know, is something you do quite often when you play the Burask in lower tier games because this tank just has all the it, it has all the tools that you need to deal a lot of damage at lower tiers and i think that's probably why the Burask is such a well-liked tank now we're gonna end this video real fast with some nine uh small box openings just nine boxes uh, i'm gonna open one just the standard array um, these are all non-premium, so it doesn't really matter, uh, but I will open all of them now in a row, five of them, and I'm going to get some shards. So in total, I get 1,100 shards, and I have three manual fire extinguishers and a bit of credits. So yeah, um, these small boxes have some goodies in them, nothing too special, but still nice to have. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. I know it's been a bit longer, uh, two gameplays and also um, a longer introduction and then the final verdict. But I think it's really important that you know what you're getting yourself into when you buy the Burask. Uh, it's not as easy as some other heavy tanks, but it does have the tools to make it easy to do damage if you know what you're doing. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'll see you guys on the next um tank review and uh in the next video until then have a good one